What's going on everybody? It's Richard Koberger here, the Blue Collar Nerd, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a parts ordering process in Service Titan through Zapier. Now, if you don't know what Zapier is yet, then you're gonna wanna check out this video first. I'm gonna put a link up in the corner of the screen here, as well as in the description down below. I'm also gonna link another video in the description where I go over how to sign up and get started with Zapier. Now, before I dive into this tutorial, let me explain the use case. Let me explain what the goal of this Zap is. So I would like to build an automatic process where when a tech out in the field realizes that they're going to need some sort of special order part for the job, they can fill out a form and then that will automatically generate a task for somebody in the office to order that part. All right, so here we are in my Zapier account and I'm going to go ahead and click make a Zap. That's going to take me to this page here. Now, the first thing I wanna do before I forget is name my Zap. So I'm gonna call this part order task. Okay, so now I have my first step here. It says one, when this happens. This is my first step, also known as my trigger event. So when this happens, step one, when this happens, trigger the rest of this automation. So my trigger events app that I need to choose is Service Titan because that's where the first thing is happening. That's where somebody in the field is going to fill out a Service Titan form and that's gonna be what triggers the rest of this automation. So I'm gonna type in Service Titan in the search bar here. I'm getting multiple results only because I'm in all the betas and stuff, but you should only be getting one result. Now, if at this point you get a little pop-up form asking you to put in things like an API key, that means you haven't linked up your account yet. Check out this video right here and that's where I show you how to do all that. All right, and then there's a drop down that says choose trigger event. Now, at the time of me making this video, there's only one option and that is get jobs. So if that's an easy choice, that's what we're gonna pick. Then I'm gonna hit continue and it's going to ask me to choose an account. I'm going to choose this example account that I've tied into Zapier already. And then I get this big list of drop downs. So basically these drop downs are some things that I can use to filter down which jobs are going to trigger the rest of this automation. So I'm gonna scroll through here, status, uh, schedule, dispatch. So if I only wanted to uh, have the status be working jobs, for example, I could filter that down here. Job type, campaigns, business unit, uh, technician name, customer name, location name. Now I'm hoping to trigger the rest of my automation when a specific form is filled out. So none of these fields really help me filter down for jobs that have this form. So I'm just gonna leave all that blank and I'm gonna hit continue. All right, then I'm gonna hit test trigger. And then that is going to pull in some example jobs for me. So I can see here it pulled in three example jobs and then I could hit load more to get even more. But for this example, it really doesn't matter which job we pick, just any old example job will do. So then I'm gonna hit continue and it's automatically going to open up a step two. So right now, step one, the trigger, is basically just a job happens, a job changes status. So anytime that happens now, Service Titan is going to send a payload of information over to Zapier. But it's doing that right now for every single job. So I need to filter it down to only jobs where a technician has filled out this part order form. I'm going to do that by making step two a filter step. Zapier has a built-in filter, so I'm just going to search for filter, and then I get this result here, filter by Zapier. And then I get these three fields, only continue if, field, condition, and value. So only continue if, I'm gonna click that drop down, and then I'm going to get some fields. I'm gonna hit show all options here to load the rest of them. And then I get this big long list of data, information that Service Titan has sent over to Zapier about our example job. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of data here. So luckily I have a search field. So I'm hoping to trigger this Zap when a technician fills out a specific form. So that's what I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna search for form and that gives me no results. So it looks like right now Service Titan doesn't send any form data, but we're not out yet because what we do get is tag names. So if I search for tag, I see right here that I'm getting all of the names of the tags on this job. So what I can do is set it up in Service Titan so that when a technician fills out this particular part order form, that automatically applies a part needed tag. And then when the technician closes the job, the presence of that tag will trigger this automation, giving me the exact same result. Smartest man alive. Smartest man alive. So that's what I'm going to pick for my first field. If tag name, and then condition, I'm going to say the condition is text contains. 
and I'm going to say if it contains the word part. Now you've got to be careful here because if you have more than one tag with the word part in it, then it's going to trigger on any tag that has the word part. But for me, I know that this is the only tag that has the word part in it, and so I'm good to go. Now if I needed to here, I could also add additional conditions, end conditions, or, or conditions. So I can say if it meets both of these conditions or if it meets either one of these conditions. But for this example, I only need the one, so I'm good to go. I'm gonna hit continue. And then I get this notification here that my zap would have continued. Now that's because I went ahead and filled out the form which automatically applied the tag on the example job that I'm working with. So that's the result I expected. But if you're following along, if you didn't apply the tag, if you didn't fill the form out and therefore apply the tag, then your notification might say that your zap would not have continued. Either one is fine as long as it's the result that we were expecting. Okay, so now I'm going to hit done editing and then I'm going to hit this little plus underneath here to add one more step. Now I choose my app and this is also going to be a Service Titan step. This is the step where we're going to be generating a task in Service Titan. So our first Service Titan step was a trigger and this Service Titan step is an action. So I have this drop down now here that says choose action event. And at the time of me recording this video in early August of 2020, here's what the options are. We can create a task in task management. That's what we're going to be using for this example. But we could also create a job note, create a new booking event, or create a job attachment. We could attach something to this job. So I'm choosing create a task in task management, and then I'm going to hit continue. Again, I'm going to choose my Service Titan account. Continue one more time and then I get all of these fields to fill out. Now, any fields that are required are going to be labeled required. If it's not labeled required, you could fill it out or leave it blank if you want to. So task creator, I'm going to set that as me. Assigned to, I'm also going to assign the task to myself for this example. Okay, now I have task name. So I'm going to name this part needed. And then in any of these fields where you can freely type information, you'll have these drop downs where you can pull data from previous steps. So if I wanted to, I could name the task part needed for customer name because I have the customer name pulled in already from my first trigger event. Let me show you what I mean. So I could hit this drop down here and then search for, and then that puts this little block here. So now it's gonna say part needed customer name. Let me put the word for there so it makes more sense. Okay, great. So now the task is gonna be called part needed for name of the customer. Task description. Now, since all of the relevant information here for ordering this actual part is going to live on a form on the job, uh, I'm just gonna type in some details to let the uh, person in the office know that that's the case. So my description here says, see details on part order form attached to job. That's a typo, hang on. Attached to job. Okay, perfect. Okay, now my next step is customer ID. And I see next to customer ID, there's this light gray one, two, three. So that indicates to me that Zapier is expecting a number in this field, not letters. So usually when you want an ID with numbers, it's, it's an ID number. So I'm going to search for customer ID. And then I see down here, there it is, customer ID. All right, job ID. This one's a little bit tricky. The field that you are searching for is just called ID because we're already pulling from the Git jobs data set and so it's just called ID. So that's what I'm gonna search for, ID. And I am gonna have to scroll through quite a few results in order to find it, but eventually I should see, there it is, just ID and then a number. So that is the field that you wanna use for job ID. This is something that admittedly needs work. You might notice that right now, we're returning a whole lot of fields. A lot of them are unnecessary and a lot of them are kind of duplicate data. And in order to clean that up, Service Titan's gonna have to put out a new version of the API, which they are working on, but we're probably looking at sometime in 2021 before that happens. So for now, there are a few quirks like that. All right, now we have business unit ID. Again, we're looking for a number. So I see that right here, business unit ID. Okay, task type. Now these are set up in Service Titan. So in Service Titan, I have a part order needed task type set up already. So I can select that here in Zapier. Task source, same thing. Those are set up in your Service Titan settings and then Zapier pulls them in. So I'm gonna say Zapier is my task source and task resolution again, set up in Service Titan. And then for this example, my resolution is part arrived and follow up is scheduled. Priority, I'm gonna set that to high. Reported date, now I'm gonna pull my reported date from my first step. So I'm gonna set that to my completed on, so the date that the job was completed. 
Now you'll see that I'm showing no data here. That's because the example job that I'm working with hasn't been completed yet. And so there is no completed on date. And then completed by, that's the due date. Now here, Zapier does its best to understand human language, what you type in here. So you could say something like next Friday, but usually the best way to do it is to take the current time, the, the time when this Zap runs, and then add however much time you want to to that. And you'll kind of see those in the little description here down below underneath the field. It says you can use this tag here with plus one D for day plus one day. That still sounds confusing. Let me just show you. So I'm gonna copy this little tag here, make sure you get the little squiggly brackets up in there and I'll paste that in and then that should transform into this little tag. Then I'm gonna put a space and then a plus and then for my example, uh, I'm going to say that this task is due uh, five days after the task gets applied. So I'm gonna say 5D plus 5D. So the zap's gonna run, it's gonna take the current time and then it's gonna add five days and then that's your due date. Okay, now I'm gonna hit continue. And now I get this page here, the step where I can test my zap. Now I see down here I have red letters, uh, reported date is empty. And that's because like I told you, I have my reported date set to the completed on date, uh, but this job isn't completed. So there is no completed on date. So that might give me a problem, but let's see. I'm gonna hit test and review. And yes, it is telling me that the task couldn't be sent to Service Titan because that reported date is blank. But that's okay because I know exactly what the problem is. So this is a great learning experience. So I know that my problem stems from the fact that this job isn't completed. So let me go into Service Titan and complete this job first and foremost. I'm gonna copy this job ID here. That should be the same as the job number. Come over to my Service Titan account and I'll just search for that job. All right, here it is in the scheduled status. And I'm just going to move through all the steps here and turn it into a completed job. Okay, so now I have a completed date in Service Titan, but Zapier doesn't know that yet. So then what I need to do is go all the way back up to step one where it says find data, go to the drop down where it says job whatever, and hit this load more button because our job just changed status. And so that's going to send a new payload over to Zapier. So if I look at job E here, after I hit load more, it's actually the same job I was just working with, except now I see status is completed. So now I need to run through everything again to update all of the fields in my Zap. So I'm gonna hit continue there, go down here. So now that I have that new job, even though it's, it's really the same job, I can come back to my final step, my third step that creates the task, hit this refresh fields button, and that's gonna make sure that my data is updated. Report date, I'm gonna again search for completed on. And I see now that there is information there. Now, all of that could have been avoided had I only picked an example that was already completed because then I would have already had completed on data. I wouldn't have had to go back and complete the job and, and do all that. But I mean, I wanna give you a real picture of what this is like. This is the kind of thing that happens. I wanna remind you here that what we're doing here, it is advanced. Okay, now I have that solved, so I'm gonna hit continue. And now I'm gonna hit test and review, and this time I'm not expecting any errors. So test and review, and green lights. The task was sent to Service Titan. So now if I go over to Service Titan, I should be able to see that task in my account. So here I am in Service Titan and I see that I do have a badge here. I'm gonna to go to Task Management to take a look at it. And there it is. So this test gives me the opportunity to give everything a once over and make sure it looks the way I want it to. Now all of this is looking good to me. So I'm gonna go back over to Zapier. And then the last step, the moment of truth, I'm going to click Turn on Zap. Boom, that is it. I see this toggle switch up in the upper right hand corner has switched to the on position. And that means that this app is running. So it's going to be constantly receiving information every time a job changes status and checking for that tag. And if it has that tag, it's going to create that task in task manager according to our rules. So three steps. One, a job happens in Service Titan. Step two, we're filtering down to look for just jobs with that tag. And then step three, we are creating a task in the task manager. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Be sure to hit like if you liked this video and found it valuable. Be sure to subscribe to Service Titan's YouTube channel if you've not done that already. And let me know in the comments down below what other zaps you'd like to see me build. I do plan to make some more tutorials and I am open to suggestions. Happy automating. Peace.